that just comes from real life. I was an obsessive child, um, you know, and I was like, I would, I did that, except I did it about um, Dreamcast games. I would call, <laughs> I would call Electronics Boutique and be like, hey, um, do you want to hear my opinions about Skies of Arcadia? I think it's a groundbreaking RPG. And they're like, kid, kid, kid. We don't have time for this right now. Like, I gotta, I gotta sell, I gotta sell Game Boys to moms, you know, or whatever. And yeah. so, so it, unfortunately, there's no symbolism. It's just the tragic reality of my lonely childhood. <laughs> oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs>For me, I'm I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, I grew up with uh, my mom. Like like I went to her outdoorsy camp growing up, and like we'd go to Colorado, go on road trips from Chicago to Colorado every summer, and we'd go there in the winter too for skiing and camping and hiking and stuff. So I love that. But you know, there's so there's so much creativity online, and like I came up through a sketch comedy group that uh, got our start on YouTube at a time when you know, that's kind of in the past now, but then people were like, what is this? And now I feel the same way about TikTok and Instagram and it's a lot. So I don't know. I think I'm, I'm still trying looking for like balance in my life about like how to make it work for me. Cause it's a little overwhelming. Um, so yeah. And I think, which I think uh, the movie's really about is finding that balance. Um, so I, I really relate to that. I'm definitely in the middle. difficult for the mother to lose focus in this story because she really acts as the glue for the family and she's sort of this love salve for the whole family. I think she wants everyone to be truly happy as who they are, but she also wants them to connect to each other and she knows how difficult that is. So, um, you know, Linda's happy if everyone else is happy, um, but there's a lot of dysfunction going on and she inserts herself whenever she needs to because family is the most important thing to her. Um, so I think without that heart of the story, um, you know, Linda really provides that heart. And I think without that in the story, it's hard to, it's hard for these characters to look at each other. Um, so she's really essential. And I do think that the work that, it, that, that Linda does in the film is, does pay off and I think, um, does come out. I love more so than her family. I love when she, you know, becomes a mother to the robots as well. You know, I think she's just got this big heart and that's, that's who she is. And she wears it on her sleeve. And what a sweet, um, what is, what a sweet little, little lady, you know, what a what big hearted lady she is. I was, I was always drawing and, and like sort of in a sketchbook and very much living in, in my head and creating other worlds because, yeah, I kind of didn't always feel like I fit in and it took me a while to find my people too. And then on the flip side, I, I'm not a parent, um, definitely not a dad, but I, there was a part of Rick's um, mentality that I really related to as well, because the way, how quick technology is changing, I, I can't keep up, you know, like, I don't know all the, I'm not on like TikTok, I'm not on all these apps that the kids are are up to that I, I, I often don't know the latest thing and sort of feeling uh, a lot of what he's feeling like, can't we just like do this thing, you know? Um, so I, I kind of, I feel, yeah, I just, I love every character in this movie. I think they're all so relatable in a lot of different ways. Uh, he really encouraged it. I mean, obviously the script was there. We got all the lines that were written. And I mean, the script uh, really works. And again, it's like a great script that creates great improvisation, I think, that like uh, creates so many ideas. It's such a clear, the joke of these robots trying to understand humanity and having the lack of intelligence, being so intelligent in one way and so unintelligent in another is such a clear comedy dynamic. So it was so fun to improvise uh, in that. Um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, from from the, his very first audition, he would just like, cause we had like a couple sides you know, where it's like, oh, try saying this. Here's a couple lines that the robots might say. And it was so fun to see him just like run with it, 
you know, where it's like after the end of the line, he did like eight other lines because it was like he was really picking up on, oh, this is what's funny about that character. Um, and th that's sort of how we we structured the movie where it was like, sure, we have lines, but like it was always like best idea wins, you know, and 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 Beck was often had the best idea. So we just put it in the movie and it was oh. great because it was like a one line that we didn't have to write. I was like, hey, there's a free joke. I love it. I didn't have to do anything. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that my dad was always trying to teach me stuff and I was so I was such a brat about it I was like no <laughs> like I'm playing <laughs> team boy um you know and he, he's like you know you should learn how to uh, you know change a tire and I'm like when would I ever need to know that I'm here with Kirby <laughs> playing Kirby's Dreamland and I don't need any of that BS but you know it's like obviously it really is good to know how to change a tire or you know, uh, uh, or fix a fence or any of these things that sort of like he was trying to teach me. So it's sort of a stand in for all the things that your parents try to instill to you that you um, initially think uh, don't matter. I don't want to sell anybody out, but I've gotten some pretty disappointing <laughs> gifts. I think like even when I was younger and I, I would always get gifts and think like, is this who you think I am? Like, I remember getting like a vest once and I was from my parents for Christmas. I was like, what? A vest? <laughs> like, well, have you met me? I, I've never worn a vest. I, I'll never, I, I don't even think I could wear, no. It's always fascinating when you see yourself through someone else's eyes. Um, and I also give practical gifts too. So I'm sure that's probably really disappointing. I like I like um, I like stocking stuffers that you can use. Some people don't. Some people don't. Yeah, I mean, I think as a kid, the most like practical, functional thing that you like need was was is always kind of like pajamas. That that kind of a you need them. You want them to you want them to be cool. But I feel like I was always kind of like great. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but my family, most of the gifts were art supplies, which was a little practical as well, but pretty, pretty well used and, and functional in a good way. <laughs>